In the winter of 2023, I watched Steven Universe, the movie, and Future for the first time. And I loved it. This has quickly become my favorite TV show ever. There's quite a lot to talk about in this show, so join me as I go over why Steven Universe was great. We are the Crystal Gems. We'll always save the day. And if you think we can, we'll always find a way. That's why the people on this call believe in garnets, amethyst, and pearl. And Steven! It's time. We've reached season five. Today we discuss one of the most controversial cartoon finales. A finale that I think is absolutely incredible. But we got a lot to discuss before we get to that. So let's head back to the start of the season with the first of season 5's five arcs. The Homeworld arc. Stuck Together is a nice simple story for the opener. Lars continues to be an amazing character. I love seeing him being fully open with Steven about his fears. Not just about his current situation, but his life as a whole. I ran and hid, just like I always do. Just like I ran from the potluck. But you were abducted. That's not your fault. No, I trashed my roll and ran away. Then I was abducted. No, oh, why couldn't I just let people eat my food? Why do you think I'm capable of anything? You think I can do all this stuff, but I can't. I can't because... I'm a was Steven. I'm just afraid. I've always just been stupid and afraid. Not like you. You're always helping people. You're never afraid. I love this scene, showing Lars's insecurities about himself. In particular, in regards to how people view him. It's a nice little way to set up his involvement with the off colors since they too have a lot of insecurities about how they're viewed. I have a lot to say about them, but we got a child to attend to first. Oh boy, this episode is just brilliant. On top of Blue and Yellow Zircon being peak Toxic Yuri, Blue Zircon's revelation is just such a great twist. So how did a Rose Quartz with no business being anywhere near Pink Diamond get so close in the first place? Where were Pink Diamond's attendants? Her agates? Her sapphires? And where was her pearl? All the characters have treated Rose Shattering Pink just as fact. The only one to question it was Steven, which, yeah, makes sense. Even Blue and Yellow Diamond just treat it as fact. So you, the viewer, don't really question it. But then this scene happens, and you're like, Hang on, yeah, how the fuck could Rose have come close enough to shatter pink? And while Blue Zircon doesn't mention this, once you start to question it, you remember... It can cut through a gem's physical form in an instant! Destroying the body, but never the gem. Oh yeah, Rose's sword can't shatter gems. And also, how could she, a simple Rose Quartz soldier, have powers like her healing tears? I'm also just a huge sucker for scenes of detectives or similar characters, putting all the evidence together. Anyway, off colors time. So remember a few months ago how I made a video pitching some Steven Universe miniseries? One of them being centered on the off colors? Well, let's just say I kind of want to make a full video in my pitching series about an off colors spinoff. I love them, like a lot. Pat Paracha is just sort of okay. She's the only one I don't love. I like her in theory, but almost all her dialogue is just her gag of delayed future vision. What happens if they find you? We'll be... shattered. But the rest? Oh fuck yeah. Fluorite is such a sweet grandma-like character. Concept of a fusion of up to six gems is really interesting. She also says queer rights. I'm sure whatever color Lars chooses will be lovely. The Rutal twins are another really cool idea. And then there's my favorite. Rodanite. I honestly don't know exactly why I love her so much. She's just so cool. I like how she acts sort of motherly to Padparacha. I love her design and I love the idea of a pearl and ruby or really any two gems owned by the same gem fusing. I've got my own headcanon surrounding all of the off colors which I'll get into in that full pitching video. 
but today we're talking about the actual Steven Universe show. I love Lars' sacrifice. Yeah, he's scared, but he won't let that stop him from doing the right thing and not running away again like he did at the end of season four. I could bring up my stupid Griff comparison again and say how Lars deciding to no longer run from the fight is like how in season 15 of Red vs Blue, Griff initially didn't want to fight due to his insecurities, but then he came back to save the day. But that was already a dumb comparison that made little to no sense, but whoops, I've already written it into the script, so oh well. Anyway, Lars is dead. Except no, he's just become way hotter now. I mean, I mean, he's pink, he's pink, he's pink, he's... <laughs> Why am I so gay for this cartoon, man? <laughs> I really like the symbolism of Lars essentially being reborn after completing his character arc. And Steven being able to resurrect him doesn't make him OP. Unless Buddy Budrick was lying in his journal, Rose had multiple lions. So why would she only resurrect one of them? I feel this makes it pretty clear that the whole resurrection power is a one-time thing. This is pretty personal, but I really like this. Besides... Us off colors stick together. Besides, us weirdos have to stick together, you know? I know this phrase didn't originate from the Owl House, but it's using that show is super special to me. But now, with Lars's arc completed and Steven safely home, the homeworld arc can finally end on this super sweet scene. This is hopeless. Huh? We'll never get that dropship to fly and we're losing time! Who knows what they're doing to Steven? Hi, Steven. What are we going to do? I'm back! <laughs> Beautiful. So that's the first four episodes done and oh fuck, we're gonna be here a long time, aren't we? I call the second arc of the season the Converse Arc. That's the ship name for Steven and Connie for all you normal people. I don't need to defend Connie's reaction to what Steven did at the end of season four. The amount of hate she gets for this is just stupid and clearly only exists due to racism and misogyny. Connie was right, Steven was a dick. Let's talk about the main episode of Dewey Wins now. I honestly really like it. I think it's good to start Steven's little arc here, showing the parallels to what he's experiencing with Connie and the mayoral debate between Bill Dewey and Anna Farpizza. Steven seeing how Bill, who up until now has seen protecting Beach City as solely his duty, give it up when realizing Nanafua is right and Beach City can only prosper as a community working together. It's not a one-to-one -one comparison, but it's enough to help Steven understand Connie's perspective. Then in Gemcation, he learns he needs to give her time and how long that takes isn't up to him. I love seeing how deeply Garnet, Amethyst and Pearl love and care for Steven. Even if they don't understand his actual struggles with his relationship with Connie, the effort they all put into making him happy is just beautiful. Especially with Pearl, who was clearly struggling a lot. Sin, she still thinks he's feeling down about being taken to Homeworld and she obviously still has her own baggage about that place, which, like last season, she almost let slip out. There are things that are impossible for me to explain, but I want to. I... <laughs> Steven, I... But the best part of this episode is easily everything with Greg. Reinforcing that no matter what anyone says, no matter how many people call him Rose Quartz, he is and will always be Steven Universe, the human. He may have crazy powers, but he will always be a real human with real human issues and struggles. Let's talk about the barn gaze now. We see Steven learn to simply let go of constantly worrying about Connie. He needs to get back to his life and Connie will be there when she's ready. Obviously this episode is peak because it has Peridot. We've been over this multiple times, but this is more of a Lapis episode, showing how while she's grown so much since that night Steven saved her from the mirror, she's still flawed. But I really like that Peridot and Steven aren't angry with her. Upset? Oh absolutely. Angry? No. They know how awful her life has been and they just want to help her, but she shuts them out. And hey, this sounds familiar, hmm. Next episode is the best ever because not only does it have Peridot, not only does it have a train, but it has Peridot on a train. Name me something more autistic than Peridot on a train. Trick question, you can't. 
Like Too Short to Ride and Beta, the trio of Steven, Amethyst, and Peridot is awesome. I love seeing more of Amethyst's aggressive love and dedication to cheering Perry up, trying to appeal to her interests like kindergartens and boasting about how smart she is. And I especially love its message that, yeah, sometimes life sucks and you can't do anything about it. But that doesn't take away from all the greatness of life. It's just like the 11th Doctor said, the way I see it, every life is a, is a pile of good things and bad things. Hey, the good things don't always soften the bad things, but vice versa, the bad things don't necessarily spoil the good things or make them unimportant. Just like we've seen Lars being more open about himself, we see the same with Sadie. We got a bit of it last season, but this is when we really start seeing it. With her officially making a band with Jenny, Buck, and Sour Cream, finally making the decision to quit her dead-end job and go for what she really wants in life. Now, due to how I want this video to end, I'm gonna be giving my song ranking as we go. So let's start that ranking now. Oh, we are the working dead. And we lurch for minimum wage But I'd really rather be In your brain Yeah, this song is pretty good Nothing amazing But for what it's trying to be I like it Now we end the Converse arc with Kevin Party Kevin does the one singular positive thing in his whole life by getting Steven and Connie in the same place so they can talk about their problems. It's a really sweet way to end this arc. I love Connie's new design, and my favorite part is that it's specifically Steven and Connie who get the last laugh, not Stevoni. They learn from their last experience with Kevin not to give him what he wants. He doesn't deserve to be in the presence of someone as awesome as Stevoni. But you want to know who does deserve to be in the presence of someone as cool as Stevoni? The Off Colors! The middle arc starts off with a bang. Lars of the Stars drops us right into the action. There's so much potential for a spin-off series here. But again, I'm saving that for a future video. I like that Lars, well, having completed his main arc, still struggles emotionally and his fears and insecurities are still present. With how he immediately starts thinking Sadie doesn't care about him and that she doesn't miss him. That's life. We're constantly changing and growing right until our death. We never reach a point where everything's fine forever. And Stevoni, of course, is the one to bring Lars back to reality. By simply being just the coolest person ever. And the new design with new hair and Beach City Drift outfit, it's easily their best look in the show until now. And what we're talking about cool people. You will not go at hyper speed! Bingo Bongo. I fucking love Lars. Bingo Bongo is permanently stuck in my vocabulary now. And then Stevoni decides, yeah, I'm just gonna be even cooler and destroy the Destiny Destroyer to defeat Emerald. <laughs> Stevoni's just so cool. Now, Jungle Moon is a really cool episode. First off, Alien World. For the first, and I think only time, we see a world that is neither human or gem. Of course, gems have been there, but we get to see the native ecosystem that has been able to prosper since the diamonds left. And okay, I know I just said we saw Stevoni's best design, but now they have stubble. So yeah, this is their best design. I fucking love stubble Stevoni. This episode also gives us some neat setup for the finale with Stevoni's dream as we get more insight into who Pink was. How she was smaller, more excited and jovial compared to the other diamonds. That vastly different personality acting towards a hint to her identity as Rose. But we also see her more aggressive side when we get our first actual look at her. And the next episode gives us even more hints towards Pink's identity. Like the two of them never being shown directly with each other in Garnet's story. But especially in how Steven talks about Stevoni's dream. Having dreams through the diamonds isn't new for him. He did it with Blue last season, but this felt different. Oh, she's gone, Stephen. Your mother made sure of that. But I felt such a strong connection. Your mother of mine is also just awesome for Garnet meeting the off colors. She's so fucking awesome, oh my god. The Big Show is a really nice story with a cool framing device. We've got two songs this episode, so let's talk about those. It's making me shout, it's making me change. Yeah, this is my least favorite of the season. But again, like The Working Dead, it's good for what it is. 
why can't you see me? I think I might be a g-g-g-girl. Same thing here, except this one has an actual role in the story with Sadie and her mum. Which I honestly relate to a lot, just replace music with YouTube videos. Back to Garnet being awesome, I love pool hopping. Not only does it have adorable kitty cats, but it's an incredibly sweet story about the bond these two share, and how proud Garnet is of how much Steven has grown. And speaking of growth, Let Us to Lars is a wonderful end to the citizens of Beach City, showing us how the whole town has changed not just the crystal gems. And with that, the middle arc is over. I call the next arc the Garnet arc, even though she really isn't relevant to the first two episodes. Starting with Can't Go Back. I don't know if this episode's title was meant to have a double meaning, but even if it's not, I like how you can interpret the title both as Lapis feeling she can't go back to Earth after how she left, but also from the perspective of the audience, not being able to go back. This is the point of no return. From here on out, it's non-stop build up to the finale. This is a really nice way to set up the end of Lapis's arc, which would come to fruition a few episodes later. It also made me wonder why Lapis hasn't sung before. Maybe I find myself smiling on that distant shore. Maybe I'm not. Jennifer Paz's voice is so amazing. It sucks all she got was this and one song in future. But back to me calling this episode starting a non-stop journey to the finale. Well, that starts with Steven's dream of Pearl, leading to one of the best episodes of the show. A single, pale, rose. I'm not gonna pretend the twist wasn't spoiled for me, because it was. But I can't deny how well it was all set up and built up across the episode. All these little hints towards the truth, as well as showing Pearl's trauma after the direct aftermath of the Diamond's attack. We're the only ones left. Homeworld. They were all leaving. We thought we'd won. There was a bright light and everyone was... Why did I do it? What are you... And all of it building to this. There's got to be another way. I mean, maybe blue and yellow don't care. They never have. This is pink diamonds colony. We can end it all right here, right now. You know this is crazy, right? Your status, my purpose, none of it will matter anymore. This will change everything. I know, isn't it exciting? <sighs> it is. We can leave our old lives behind. If this is really my world, I want to give it to the Crystal Gems. I want to live here with human beings. I want to live here with you. We'll both finally be free. Okay, I'm ready. I can't believe I'm going to do this. I can't exactly shatter myself. I think my favourite part of this is the pause between Rose saying I can't exactly shudder myself and reverting to her form as pink, letting the audience figure it out on their own before explicitly revealing it. And after hiding the secret to herself for so long, Pearl is finally able to come clean to Steven, as well as Amethyst and Garnet. Now the Garnet arc can really start. Something I only picked up on this rewatch was the differences between Ruby and Sapphire's reaction to the last time they had unfused. In Keystone Motel, Ruby was very outwardly angry about the situation with Pearl, while Sapphire was trying to be much calmer, trying to move past it. This time, however, it's flipped. Sapphire is the one who's mad, and Ruby is the one that's trying to stay calm. I love now we're only falling apart. It's added backstory for Rose, showing how she genuinely loved the Earth and the life it creates. Rose was flawed, but she genuinely wanted to do good. She didn't see other gems as beneath her, like the diamonds, or other highly ranked gems would. She was inspired by them. She was inspired by Garnet just as much as Garnet was inspired by her. I also love it showing another side to Sapphire we haven't really seen from her. We never really seen Sapphire get mad like this on her own. 
and despite her anger, she still does love Ruby. Ruby and Sapphire are great, fully fleshed characters in their own right, outside of just they fuse into Garnet. But she's so wonderful and spontaneous. I have no idea what she could. Why would she be a cowboy? <laughs> uh -huh. There, there. Uh, okay, this is one of the funniest clips in the show. I don't make the rules. Now, what's your problem? I feel I haven't praised Amethyst enough recently, so thank God for this episode giving us some of her best moments. I think this episode solidifies my belief that Amethyst and Steven are my favorite dynamic in the show. Amethyst is just so fucking awesome. She loves Steven so much and- <laughs> The show is so good! I'm losing my mind. I'm going to freaking. Want to know how I feel, Steven? I thought I was pretty clear about that. I thought I was pretty clear too. I feel like I don't want to say what about me, okay? And I don't want to be bent out of shape. I don't want to be stuck in the past. And I'm not responsible for what Rose did. None of us are. Not you, not Pearl, and not Garnet. But I am responsible for me, and right now, I am not going to dump another thousand-year-old complex on you or anybody else. I'm ending it right here. I am the ding-dong sunshine future, your friend forever. And I'm not going to fall apart on you. Amethyst. So, Steven, how do you feel? Pretty good. Everything about this is so good. She loves him. That's her fucking brother. Oh my gosh, I'm going to go. I'm actually insane right now. Hey, Amethyst. What? I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I think you're officially the most mature crystal gem. Oh no. Oh, gross, that's what this is, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. No! No! <laughs> you still want to find Ruby? Yeah. All right. Like, how do people see this and not just think, oh yeah, this is like one of the best shows ever created? Fuck! And now Ruby's a cowboy. Again, like Sapphire, we get to see more Ruby as an individual. Even more so here, she's a cowboy. Ruby can now join Daryl in the Gay Red Cowboy Club. Although Daryl sadly never got a banger like this. This song is simply just fun. It's good for showing Ruby's current feelings and it's just really nice to listen to. I love the ending to this episode. It's a great message about how romantic relationships or really any relationships don't fully define us, but that doesn't take away from how important those bonds are. Ruby loves being a cowboy, but she also still loves Sapphire and still wants to be garnered with her. No matter what happened in the past, she can have both all resulting in not just one of the best scenes in the show, but one of the most important scenes in children's entertainment. Someone else told us we were the answer, but I don't believe that anymore. At least, not till I hear it from you. Sapphire, will you marry me? What? marry you yeah this way we could be together even when we're apart this time being garnet will be our decision what do you say of course Yeehaw! Mm. i've been waiting to kiss your cute face <laughs> not only is this scene beautifully written animated voice acted and scored but this proposal led to the episode Reunited, which I'll get to soon right after we talk about Maid of Honor. First, I like the wordplay in the title. 
Second, I love how they handled Bismuth's return. Bismuth was shown to already deeply regret her actions at the end of Bismuth, and from everything we saw of her and what we've been told by Garnet and Pearl, of course she isn't going to be mad again seeing Steven. And while she does get mad seeing the bubble gems, once she's shown the truth, she doesn't fight it. She never really needed a redemption arc. And once Steven tells her the truth about Rose and Pink, okay, she's still mad, of course, but you know she she handled it pretty well. Oh my god! It all makes sense now. And everything I've been talking about with her character and all that, it means Pearl, Ruby, and Sapphire immediately welcoming her back in open arms, not feel rushed. I love this episode. But now it's time to talk about one of the objectively most important pieces of children's entertainment and also queer media as a whole. Reunited. For just one day, let's only think about love is a beautiful song. I love how much it feels like a musical with all the small dialogue segments and referencing things like Lapis and the Cluster as set up for later in the episode. And it's also just got wonderful lyrics. Yeah, life sucks. There's so many horrible things happening right now. But why let that get us down when Ruby and Sapphire are getting married? There's an awful lot of awful things we could be thinking of, but for just one day, let's only think about just one day, let's only think about. Just one day, let's only think about. Everything about this wedding is perfect. I find it kind of hard to put into words. It's just perfect. I know this is all kind of silly. I mean, we've been together for 5,750 years and eight months. I used to feel like I wasn't much good, just one of me on my own. But when we're together, it feels like it's okay to just be me. So I want to be me with you. And, and not even the diamonds will come between us. And if they try, we'll beat them up. <laughs> Ruby, my future used to look like one single obvious stream, unbending till the end of time. In an instant, you pulled me from that destiny and opened my eye to an explosion of infinite possible futures streaking across space and time, altered and obliterated by the smallest force of will. What I mean is, you changed my life, and then I changed your life, and now we change our lives. First gay wedding in a kid's cartoon. Between two characters first shown in that relationship before same-sex marriage had even been legalized in the US. In my 40 minute Our House review from a few months ago, I talked about how the LGBT rep in that show really helped me with my journey of queer discovery. And Our House and many other shows would not have the rep they do if it wasn't for Steven Universe. And I absolutely love how Rebecca Sugar made sure to fuck with the overseas censors by putting Sapphire in a suit and Ruby in a dress, since overseas Ruby was often censored to being changed to male. And we also get huge plot progression, making it a non-skippable episode. I couldn't figure out how to smoothly transition to this point, so I'm just gonna squish it in here. Peridot in her yellow dress is adorable. Look at the autism bean. I want to pop her. Hey, yellow clod, remember me? No. Fuck yeah, that's the spirit, yellow. This whole sequence is really interesting. Before I watched the show, the internet told me Steven was some sappy pacifist who never fights. Um, did you guys watch the show? Steven and the gems aren't strict pacifists. They will fight if they have to. The diamonds are fucking powerful. They know and they absolutely stand zero chance at winning a fight with them. Fighting them as hard as they can until they shut the fuck up and listen is the best course of action. I also don't know where this idea that Steven was super forgiving of the diamonds came from. Like that never happened. Oh, also we're talking about the finale arc now. It basically switches in the middle of the episode. Another detail that isn't really relevant to my talking points is Ronaldo having the really cool sword you give him and save the light. That's cool. What's also cool is the return of Lapis and the Cluster which was neatly set up, as I said, in For Just One Day, Let's Only Think About Love. This is a great sequence as a whole. Everyone fighting together, Lapis being unfazed by Blue's power, Stronger Than You playing over Garnet. Ah, it's all so cool. Okay, enough rambling. The diamonds did not immediately change. I don't know where this idea came from. 
They stop fighting because they genuinely believe Steven is pink right now. And that's how Steven is able to change their mind across these last episodes, as they learn who he is because they will listen to him. And as to the whole, oh, they're not fighting the diamonds, they're just being nice to Nazis bullshit. One, don't just throw around the word Nazi like it has no meaning. Fuck off. Especially in regards to a show created by a Jewish person, because you have no idea what you're talking about. And two, what the hell are they supposed to do? There's absolutely no chance of the crystal gems killing or even just imprisoning the diamonds. So the options are do nothing or get them to spend the rest of their existence undoing all the damage they had caused. Also, you know, the diamonds are literally the only ones with the power to undo all that damage. So fuck all those corrupted gems, I guess. The joy seems pretty obvious. And Steven never started liking the diamonds. He still hated them and only acted nice because that's just who he is and it's a logical thing to do when trying to convince someone to change their mind. Now this is our first time really seeing Homeworld. We hardly saw any of it at the start of the season, but now it's here on full display. It's time to talk about White Diamond. Firstly, her pearl. Only pink diamond's presence is necessary. Hearing a voice that is clearly not DD Mango Hall come from a pearl on top of her pure white and cracked eye well, that's terrifying. And then it's like, oh, that's why her voice is different. She's being mind controlled by White, who... Hello, Starlight. You certainly gave everyone a scare. They're all just thrilled to see you safe and sound. Oh my god, this is how you make an impression. Christine Ebersole's performance is just brilliant. And I just love her whole design and demeanor. The pure white room, it's all just... <gasps> You're here. Come in. Okay. Hold on. That was the old Minecraft splash sound. What the fuck? As I said, Steven is able to convince the diamonds since they still think he's pink. We do see change over time, like Blue actually calling him Steven. They also don't just go along with everything he says. They don't respect the other crystal gems. They don't respect his desire to wanting to have fun at the ball. And they super don't respect him for fusing with Connie, especially White, who again, through White Pearl slash Pink Pearl slash Volleyball slash whatever, is pretty fucking scary. I know I'm gonna get people making fun of me for saying that, but to me, shit like this that just unnerves you with no direct threat is what I find truly scary. Now before we go further, no, I did not forget about Familiar. I just couldn't figure out how to fit it in naturally until now. So let's talk about that. Cause Zach Callison decided he was gonna walk into the recording booth and just sing with the voice of a god. Oh, I'll get them all together in one place. And once we're all together face to face I'll show them all the error of their ways and stop their spread of terror across space holy caterpillar in a pie this song is just so brilliant I'm losing my mind over how beautiful it is now, escapism is very simple for the penultimate story, but it ends wonderfully. I guess I have to face that in this awful place I shouldn't show a trace of doubt But pulled against the grain I feel This is just one of the most beautiful songs in the whole show, both in terms of the song itself and the visuals. But now, we've reached it. Change your mind. When I first watched this, my reaction was just, that's it? That's what the internet got all mad about? That was beautiful and one of the greatest things I've ever seen. It's not hard to see why this finale and the show as a whole got so much hate. 
It's just down to basement dwellers throwing a tantrum that it's a queer show created by a non-binary Jewish bisexual. Also that stupid fucking Lily Orchard video that's probably one of the worst videos ever put in this site. No Lily, Stavotti is not being sexualized here. This scene isn't sinister. Yellow Diamond wasn't treated super seriously in her debut. She literally turns into a fucking soy jack. But I don't want to talk about that bullshit. So I'm just gonna recommend these two videos I'll link in the description if you want to see proper debunks of Lily Orchard and some other terrible videos on Steven Universe. I like the way we see the diamonds all begin to side with Steven. Starting of course with Blue, who was always shown to be the more emotional one. And it's through Blue that Steven is able to partially convince Yellow so they stand a chance against White. I love Steven bringing back the iconic if every pork chop were perfect we wouldn't have hot dogs quote. It fits the message really well. No one can really be perfect and imperfections are what make life so great. Again, blue and yellow aren't completely changed yet. And of course white doesn't care what they have to say. Why would she? So whoops, everyone is falling now. Smokey comes back, which is always a delight, but I'm more hyped with the introduction of Rainbow Quartz 2.0 and Sunstone. Rainbow is fucking awesome, and he's got a British accent, so when I say he's fucking awesome, you know I mean it. I also just love his whole personality. A brilliant mix between Pearl's polite dignity and Steven's whimsical childlike wonder. Now this is a fine mess we're in. <gasps> Two. And Sunstone is simply the definition of cool. Let's take that bully down! But remember kids, if you ever have to deal with a bully, be sure to tell an adult. Oh, that's yet another 4-4 four -four break. Maybe I was wrong in the last video about this being Sardonyx's fault. Maybe all this is Uncle Grandpa's fault. Or maybe it was the fault of that dude from that OKKO episode who was trying to take power of Cartoon Network characters across the multiverse, one of them being Garnet. Anyway, all these new designs are awesome. I love Pearl's jacket, Amethyst is finally free of that ugly white shirt, Goddess' new star visor looks great, and oh yeah, Lapis, Peridot, and Bismuth are here now. Those first two finally getting stars in their design, truly making them crystal gems. And then we get Obsidian. This was the only time you could really have them finally appear. But now we've reached the climax. Oh my gosh, everything about this is brilliant. More of White's terrifying presence with that really unsettling sound. Hello there. Your new friends are so funny. Is that what they're supposed to be? Funny? <laughs> White's laugh too. Oh god. <laughs> Your mom? <laughs> it's also stress inducing. And then it just hits you with probably the most stress inducing scene of the show. Now, Starlight, this has gone on long enough. It's time to come out. And then, it happens. If the diamonds couldn't be convinced through Steven's words, they'll need to be convinced by having the truth shouted in their face. What is this? Where is Pink? She's gone. What did you say? Answer me! She's gone! <laughs> Peak. That's all I can say. Peak. And oh, look at that. James Baxter came along to give us some of the most beautiful animation in the show. Oh, what else can I even say at this point? This finale is just so good. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm me. I've always been me. No! You are Pink Diamond! That is Pink Diamond's gem! You do not look like this. You do not sound like this. You are not half human. You're just like a child! I am a child. What's your excuse? <laughs> Not only is that just a really awesome comeback, but it's just the perfect way to hit the nail in the coffin to change White's mind. 
by forcing her to see the flaws in herself. Genuinely, simply peak. I know I don't have a plan. I'm working on that part. At least I've got a van. So let me drive my van into your heart. 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 What a perfect song to bring back in the finale, taking us back to the second episode of the show. And hey, the off-colors are here too. I love Lars and Sadie's reunion, seeing how much they've both grown from selling donuts together. And I love this moment between Lars and Lion. Nothing needs to be said, it's just a sweet, gentle moment. You know what this means. And how do we end this brilliant show? Well, what other way could it be? We are the crystal gems. Winter of 2023, I watched Steven Universe, the movie, and Future for the first time. And I loved it. There's still so much more to talk about with this show. So join me next time as I continue to go over why Steven Universe was great. And even after that brilliant song, the final scene is perfect. Just Steven, Garnet, Amethyst and Pearl, together on the beach. I had an idea. Well, a song idea, but also an idea idea. Let's hear it. Yes, please. I don't need you to respect me, I respect me. I don't need you to love me, I love me. But I want you to know you could know me if you change your mind. If you change your mind, if you change your mind, change your mind.